Gets a nice ovation, Ray. This has been a heartwarming homecoming today. Very popular goaltenders. The fans rise out of their seats from just not an ovation, but to a standing ovation for Schneider. You know, he just wants the puck to hit the ice and the game can start, but he had plenty to say to lots of people today. Many of them very, very excited and happy to see Schneider, who handled his role with grace and, quite frankly, played real well in a Vancouver uniform. He's 0-1 on the year, started the opener for New Jersey the first time in 19 years. Someone other than Martin Brodeur started the Devils' first game of the year. He took a 3-0 loss against Pittsburgh. Kevin Bieksa moves it ahead to Daniel Sedin. Back with his brother Henrik and Yannick Hansen as Schneider steers that long shot away. And now a centering pass knocked down by Travis Zajac. And it's poked ahead to Michael Ryder. Devils lost 5-4 last night in a shootout in Edmonton. in a wild game. They led 3-0. Then trailed 4-3 late, tied it up with a shorthanded goal in the last minute, and then lost in the shootout. So tonight they play their second set of a league-leading 22 back-to-back -back games. It's good, even though their travel is, is much easier than on the West Coast, this is going to be quite a test for the Devils throughout their season. 44 of their games will be in back-to-back -back sets. That's, that's going to be a real difficult schedule to navigate. Patrick Eliash out there along with Dinah Zubras and Yarmir Yager, who scored last night for New Jersey. His first goal was a devil on the 23rd anniversary of his first NHL goal, scored against New Jersey as a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And now Zubras battling for it as Chris Higgins steps into him. Vancouver has two shots officially so far on the game, both from well out as Higgins battles with Zubris for the loose puck. Zubris has lost his stick. And Bryce Salvador battles for it. Now down low, Ryan Kessler centers it through the feet of Higgins and Eliash pokes it out. Now a race for it, Zubris and Dan Hamhuis. And Hamhuis got there first. Zubris stays on him and Yager intercepts the puck in behind the Vancouver goal. Now Volchenko with a shot, tip right on Luongo, pad save, he's down. And Luongo able to hang on. Luongo fights for the save as the shot by Volchenkov is deflected out in front of the net. The puck is going to rim around the boards here as Hamhuis throws it up the boards. Dale Weiss is way too low, so Kessler gets out to try and block it, but this shot is tipped in the slot by Patrick Eliash. Luongo has to fight there as Jager gets a, a couple of whacks at it. Luongo's pad is flat to make the save and hang on to the rebound. Draw one back to Volchenkov across to Peter Harold. Two changes for the Devils tonight. Ryan Carter is out of their lineup. They put Rostislav Olej in. And Adam Larson, the fourth overall pick in 2011, a healthy scratch again tonight. That long shot. Off the stick of Chris Tanev, steered away by Schneider. And so Mark Fain draws in. He was a regular defenseman two years ago for the Devils when they went to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, Peter DeBoer, the Devils coach, was saying, the reason for the changes, of course, back-to-back -back nights, so they get a couple fresh legs in, and then he said, well, and we don't have any wins either. So they, the Devils look for the right combination. They have five new forwards in their top 14 forwards, so it's a, a little bit of a feeling out process for the Devils, and perhaps this five-game road trip that they're on here through Canada, game one last night, game two tonight, can help them learn a little bit more about their hockey club. Kevin Bieksa plays that back down to the Canucks zone where it's scooped up by Ryan Stanton. He takes a hard bump, moves the puck ahead. Stanton's one player who has impressed the coaching staff here in Vancouver. Picked up from the Chicago Blackhawks on waivers. Now puck kept in at the line and fired down on goal by Andy Green. Tom Sestino with it, takes the pass from Zach Delphi. That's intercepted. And Oles, ranked number 25, with a long shot to Luongo, steers away. Oles, he wore number 85 his whole career, but numbers over 30 are not permitted in New Jersey with one exception. Yager gets to keep number 68. You play 1,300 games, maybe you get a little bit of yeah. a break. Win the MVP four or five times. Yeah, when you're Ristislav Oles, you don't get a break. 85 becomes 25. Here's Edler with it. Swings it across, and Garrison with a shot. That goes wide. Yannick Hansen picks it up in the corner. Slides it down to Henrik Sedin. Back in front he goes to Daniel with a shot. He whistled it just wide. 
And Henrik back with it. Five assists in the first three games for the Canucks. Daniel loose down low. Feeds it back in front. Yannick Hansen kicking at it. Lost the handle. And Michael Ryder wearing number 17 for New Jersey. 73 goes out the window. And well, and 17 became available this summer when Ilya Kovalchuk bolted back to Russia. In comes Ryder with Zajac. Centering pass, Zajac didn't get it all, and then fired it back through the crease. Great pace here in the early going as Daniel Sedin back ends it down to the devil zone. And Bryce Salvador back for it. Much the same start that New Jersey had in Edmonton last night where they have the better of the chances early. Now loose in front, Salvador chips that to Zajac. Looking for Yager rink wide, and it's chipped down by Adam Henrique. And back is Jason Garrison to pick it up. Fan on the clearing attempt, and now Ham Hughes moves out ahead to Higgins. Peter Harrell just missed Yager's head with that shoot in, and Yager kind of gave him stink eye on the way by. Travis Zajac's developed into a dependable, all purpose centerman for the Devils, and after the Canucks turn the puck over in the middle of the ice, where Henrik Sedin and Edler get crossed up, Zajac's going to go to the net, take the pass from Ryder. Real nice left-to-right push from Luongo as he gets across on the two-on-one. And as you mentioned, Gord, Zajac doesn't get a whole lot on it, but Luongo gets across to snuff out the chance. Zajac signed through 2021 by the Devils, one of the few players on a long-term contract with this team. In fact, New Jersey has only 12 players under contract for next year. When the cap goes way up, Balchenkov fires it right back down as Tanev has to skip off his stick. Yager back on it. Down to Eliash. To Yager. Centers it. Supers with a point blank shot and Luongo makes the save. It's three chances the Canucks aren't going to be thrilled with as they get chasing behind the net. Look, two Canucks. Kessler and Tanev wander behind the net. Nobody stays to the front of the net. If Tanev is going to chase the puck, Kessler, who's the second guy, has to take a lane in front of the goaltender, and he can deny that pass to Zubris. A lack of communication by Kessler and Tanev. They get crossed up for just a moment, and it leads to a good scoring chance. Bakshiana battles for the puck in the corner with Weiss, and Dale Weiss comes away with it. Lost to Hamlin. Lakshiana plays it back in. Lakshiana was acquired from L.A. at the start of last season. And played pretty well for New Jersey. And their hope is that he'll become a regular offensive contributor for a team that was last in the league in even strength goals last season. Somehow you got to find a way to generate more offense, as you as you mentioned. So with Kovalchuk gone, they went for a, a committee approach. It's Ryan Klo, it's Rusty Olish, it's Michael Ryder. They, they're looking for a, a group of forwards to maybe give them a little bit more goals than by committee than Kovalchuk could have given them all by himself. Now BX it back with it, trying to chip that ahead for Richardson, knocked away from him. And sent ahead to Damian Bruner, who comes over from Detroit in the offseason. Had a strong playoff for the Red Wings, led them with five goals in 14 postseason games. But he came to camp on a tryout with New Jersey and then got a two-year contract. And now Weiss fires that down to the Jersey zone where Schneider plays that ahead to Marek Zedlitsky. He turns it over to Hansen. In comes Yannick Hansen. Sends it off a leg and bounced away from Richardson. Now Richardson gets it right back. Works into the slot. And backhands that to the corner. Daniel Sedin back to Garrison. Across to Ham. Use a long wrist shot. Goes off the leg of Zidlitsky. Now Daniel Sedin around to Henrik. Trying to feed that back in front. The pass is blocked by Steve Bernier. Garrison steps up again. Battles there with Steven Gianta. And now played across the ice. And Daniel Sedin reaching for it. Puck kept alive by Henrik. Drops it back to Daniel. Shoots. Schneider will say rebound. Oh, what a stop by Schneider on Henrik Sedin. And Ham Hughes holds the line. His long shot blocked by Zidlitsky. Comes loose to Henrik. With the pass back and Steven Gianta skates. Devils can't clear. Garrison shoots. Pad saved by Schneider. And Zidlitsky lifts that high in the air and down to the Vancouver zone. If you were looking for great goaltending, we've seen it at both ends of the ice already. Terrific stops early by Luongo and Corey Schneider with three beauties in a row after the Devils end up exhausted in their zone. They turn the puck over and Schneider at his best. Shots on goal are 6-4 to four in favor of the Canucks in a very brisk first period. Chris Higgins wins that race to the puck. In comes Kessler to help him out. David Booth circling in front. And Edler steps up for Vancouver. 
Alex Edwards playing about 25 minutes a game so far this season. And John Furlow looking for more from him. In comes Booth. Gets around Volchenkov. Booth loose in front. Punk check there by Schneider. And the X have fired it wide. Higgins looks down to Kessler. Harold steps into him. Now Kessler fights off the check. Higgins comes in to help up. All three cannot forwards down low now. And Booth stick it broken on him. As Volchenkov has some time and plays it ahead for Zajac. Chip set by Weiss, and now the Canucks have to regroup. Lead pass to Bieksa bounces on the line. Harold turns it over to Richardson. In comes Brad Richardson. Sends it back in front. That pass just missed Higgins. And Eliash backhands that out for New Jersey. Ryan Stanton drops it off for Weiss. Stanton gets it right back. Centering pass goes off the skate of Santorelli. And Yager has it for New Jersey. In for Dinah Zubra, spins in front of Tanev and turns the puck over. And Tanev plays it across to Weiss. Santorelli wins that race for the puck with Green. And Santorelli, a central figure in Vancouver's come from behind. Winning Calgary sends it back to Tanev with a shot. China the save. And now Zubras plays that to the line and out for the Devils. The Devils had one official turnover in the first 40 minutes last night in Edmonton. They've had a half a dozen here in the last two shifts. It's been a, a pretty a, sluggish start. And there's another one. Henrik Sedin knocks it down, centers it. And the pass off the stick of Hansen. Cam Hughes now down low to Henrik Sedin. Back he goes to Garrison. To Henrik. Chris crossing with Daniel. That drop pass in the speed of Green. And Lakshyanov plays that to an open corner. Now Fain has to go off his stick, and it's finally played out by Green. You don't have to be real tired to make tired mistakes. You just need to be a little fatigued. The long shift has put the Devils right on their heels. Now Henrik Sedin with a shot that floats wide, and Garrison on it now. Down to Daniel. Works it back in front, rolled off his stick, locks Young up. Got that ahead to Klo, and Ryan Klo works in with Bruder. Klo around Hamhuis. Aligns with Garrison hard. Here's Bruder back with it. And Garrison intercepts that pass. Garrison uses the longest stick you can and puts it to good use. Cam Hughes battling there with Bruder, who wins the battle for the puck and shoots Luongo the save. And he'll pounce on the rebound. 9.55 to go in the first period, and Corey Schneider's been sharp in the early going. The last four or five minutes have been about the Canucks forecheck and offensive zone pressure and some brilliant stops by Corey Schneider. Long shot for the deflection by Hansen is deflected onto Schneider. A right pad save on Henrik Sedin as you see how quickly Schneider pushes and gets across to make that save. And then the point shot is going to come later from Jason Garrison. And Schneider flattens his pad out to make that stop to real good control as Schneider usually has. It's been an entertaining first 10 minutes. Playing in his 100th NHL game tonight. Tanev ahead for Hansen, along with the Sedin. Steven Gianta stepped into him. And now Tanev across to Stanton. Down to Hansen with a rolling puck. Back to Henrik. Looking for Daniel. And Bryce Salvador stepped into him. A penalty coming. And as Zidlitsky picks it up, a slashing call coming against the Devils. When Zidlitsky goes to retrieve his stick, I think he's the man who's going to get it. Number two, New Jersey, two minutes for slashing. When Zidlitsky ends up with a, a broken stick, the Devils think they're getting the power play. The Canucks are thinking, hey, maybe it's us. There's the slash, and he gets the, the slash on top of Daniel Sedin's stick. The Devils shorthanded for the first time tonight, and the Canuck power play will get their first crack, obviously. And Garrison and Edler back at the point. Edler winds and fires. That deflected just wide. Got by Hendricks and Ian and down the ice. Far different look to the Canucks power play with two real big shots, and Edler and Garrison on the point. You'll see Kessler start at the front of the net and then fade out to the side on some occasions, but this will be centric with the, the heavy point shots of both Edler and Garrison. I don't know if people have heard, but there's a new head coach here in Vancouver. Across it goes to Daniel Sedin with a shot. Schneider got a piece of that. It's way up in the air, bounces down to the crease. Still loose. Scooped up by Henrique, and he fires it down the ice. 
Pretty good wrestling match in front of the net, too, with Salvador and Ryan Kessler right in front of the doorstep of, of Corey Schneider. And Edler drops it back. Head comes Ryan Kessler across the line. His pass intercepted. Volchenko plays it ahead to Elias. He scored shorthanded to tie the game in the last minute last night. That was a shovel shot from the corner. Yes. The Devils had just pulled the goaltender and it deflected in off of Andrew Ference's foot. Here's Kessler across the line to Henrik. Back to Edler. Across to Daniel. Centers it. Volchenko blocked that pass and Schneider picks up what's left. As much as there is some wonderful finesse from the Sedins on this power play, they scored a beauty on Saturday against Edmonton on it. Ryan Kessler's going to get right to the front of the net, and where he's going to do most of his damage is right from that 5 to 10 feet in front of the net. Here he is bounced, looking for this loose puck, and you see the wrestling match with Schneider, with the, with rather Salvador and Kessler right in front of Schneider. Santarelli wins the draw back to Hamhuse to Higgins. Walking in and shoots at the flex wide. Santarelli back on it. 35 seconds to go on the Vancouver power play. Higgins to Santarelli, back to Hamhuse. Rossi goes to Bieksa, to Hamhuis. Thought about shooting, now does, and that goes off a stick and wide. And Fiend off the boards and down the ice. Bieksa almost lost that puck to Gianta, now Gianta races to it. Bieksa gathers it back up as the Canucks regroup and works his way in to Higgins. Higgins back in front, will take off, knock that wide. Final seconds now, the Vancouver power play, here's Boot. In for Santarelli. Off the leg and wide. The puck loose to Salvador as Edliski steps out of the box. And Gould had to be quick with that as Henrique got in behind him as well. Higgins for Santarelli. Banks it back, intercepted by Zedlitsky, and the Devils are away. Henrique fires it down. And they're going back along with Zajac. They battle for it. Henrique comes in to help out, and now Zajac wins the battle. Back to Harold. Harold's pass over the head of Henrique. And Richardson collides with Harold. Scramble along the wall for it. Weiss finally flips it off the glass and out. Now both teams will change. 6.45 to go. Still no score here in the first period. Devils first time in Vancouver since November of 2010. Another broken stick down this time, Yannick Weber. As the Canucks once again have seven defensemen dressed for the game, Yager took a hard bump there from Sestito. And the puck still tied up in the corner. Weber had time to go back to the bench and gather up a new stick, didn't miss a thing. Eliage, along with Yager, flips out ahead as Garrison goes back and Yager closes on him. Now Zubras in on Weber. Plays it back to Eliage, who flipped it back for Yager. Yager took down Edler. And Elias gets spun around, but the puck goes to Yager. Plays it back to Salvador, to Fane. Fane looking for Elias on the other side. Yager's shot deflected by Garrison up and out of play. 5.53 to go here in the opening period. Roberto Luongo back at home and looking comfortable. No score here with 5.53 to go in the opening period. The shots are 7 to 5, Vancouver. And the draw won by Lakshyanov. Back to Bruner. To Green. To Fane. And Klo reaching for it. Now Ryan Stanton has it back for Vancouver. His pass skips by Hansen. And that's icing against the Canucks. Tonight's game plan brought to you by Tim Hortons, Canada's favorite coffee. Well, the Devils fell apart in 7 minutes and 57 seconds last night in Edmonton. They gave up four goals in that span, and the Devils have long been built on their structure in the defensive zone. Pete DeBoer is looking for that again, and John Tortorella mentioned this morning he wants north-south hockey. He doesn't think there's many lateral plays against the Devils. There hasn't been for years, and for the middle part of this period, the Canucks have done a real good job of that. Now a centering pass to Bruner, who puts that through the crease. Fane back on it, fires it wide. Bruner tried to center it. The pass was blocked, and that seemed to stagger Chris Tanev. Now a long drive on Luongo, who swats the rebound away from Klo. And a scrum for it in the corner. Klo and Kessler in there. Bruner comes in to help out. The puck's moved about 
a foot. And that goes right back. Finally poked out. And Stanton plays it ahead to Daniel Sedin. Rink wide he goes for Hanson. Hanson's long shot. Knocked away by Schneider. Daniel Sedin on the rebound. Had it blocked by Green. The Canucks were working on that this morning in practice. Just a shot from the wing and shoot it off the far pad. Try for a rebound. That's exactly what Hanson did there. And they ended up retrieving the puck. NHL on TSN. Back to Vancouver in a moment. The Devils are the oldest team in the National Hockey League. These three guys have a lot of the reason to do with it. 119 years old, 59 years of NHL experience for two certain Hall of Famers in Yarmir Yager and Marty Brodeur. And in Patrick Eliash, a player Lou Lamarillo told me has been one of the best all-around Devils in the last 20 years. 59 years of experience. <laughs> Eliash elected to re-sign with the Devils, which surprised some people. He was headed for unrestricted free agency, but chose not to leave New Jersey. And there would have been plenty of interest oh, yeah. in Eliash. What a what a real solid, quiet player he is. He plays the wing. He plays in the middle of the ice. After the season last year in his exit meeting with Peter DeBoer, they talked about the Devils being a better team with him in the middle of the ice. And so a longtime winner, winger goes back into the middle this year. Although for a long time he complained about playing in the middle. Garrison pokes it ahead to Booth. And now Bernier hacks that back in for New Jersey. But the play is offside. So Yager and Eliash together on a line and together on a team finally. But here they are in terms of active players. Eight is Eliash in points. Yager ranks first among active players in the league. When Yager scored for Edmonton, it's the fourth different team he scored a goal for since his 40th birthday. He and Tim Horton are the only two players in NHL history ever to do that. He scored for four different teams after their 40th birthday. And that point total, don't forget, that was with the three-year hiatus to right. the KHL as well. You know, Yager led the Dallas Stars in goal scoring last year, even though he was traded with a month ago in the season. Daniel Sedin shoots, and that's tipped just wide by Henrik. Now fired wide by Edler, and down it goes to Daniel. A rolling putt, couldn't corral it. Ryder has it now and plays it up for New Jersey. Zay Jack to Ryder. And now Zay Jack tried to intercept it, but the play was offside. The NHL on TSN is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. As the period's flattened out a little bit here, Gord, the one thing that John Tortorella spoke about this morning was that he wants a consistent mindset of being aggressive. And for the Canucks, it's, you can't get lulled into a real tight, slower game. They have to continue to push the puck up the boards, get support onto it, get people on the puck, keep the pace as high as they can. We asked Tortorella prior to the game how long he thought it was reasonable to expect him to know his team well and how long for the team to know what he expects. He figures a month. 12, 13 games, and then everyone should know each other. And that means a comfort in the system. That means just knowing what to expect and who's going to be on the ice in certain situations. And as John said, he doesn't know these players very well. Being in the Eastern Conference his whole career as a coach, he's, he's got to learn about an entire conference, and that includes this team. And then look out. And then, and then you'll get real tough on them. <laughs> Honeymoon's over. Back goes Volchenkov being watched by Weiss, and here's Yager with it. Long lead pass for Eliash. That passes out of his reach. And Ham used back for it. Welcome, viewers, on the NHL Network tonight, wherever you're looking in. No score here in the opening period. Corey Schneider and Roberto Luongo doing what they do best as the puck goes over the glass, up and out of play. Schneider has had a about a four or five minute stretch where he made a half a dozen excellent saves in the in the New Jersey goal. A couple deflections, a great rebound stop on Henrik Sedin. And prior to that, it was Roberto Luongo who carried the day in the Vancouver net where he made a couple real sharp saves, a couple through traffic. Now Higgins with his steal, sends it back in front, Schneider the save. And Lakshyanov had that knocked away. Now Higgins spins and shoots it wide. Down it goes to Boot. Stanton steps up for Vancouver. Down for Higgins. He was tripped up by Zidlitsky. 
Akshianov banks out ahead for Bruner and back down to the Canucks zone. Of course, Luongo started games one and two of the playoff series against San Jose last year. Lost them both. Schneider got the start in game three, got pulled after allowing five goals on 29 shots. Then started game four and took the loss. But at one point last year, Schneider started 11 straight games for the Canucks. Bruner chips it down to the Vancouver zone. The exit plays it away to Edler. Daniel to Henrik. They play pitch and catch as Hansen jumps in as well. Henrik in across the line. Poke check there by Green. Now Bieksa goes back as Andy Green bears down on him. Green still on it. Oleg centers it. Bruner shoots and Luongo steps out and squeezes that and hangs on. Nice stop by Luongo going right to left, but this is all starts at the other blue line with a real heady, aggressive play by Andy Green. He pokes Henrik Sedin off the puck. He stays in the race with Bieksa, and as he gets tied up with him, the Devils get puck support as Klo will jump in on the board side. Bieksa wedges out Green, but Green stays in the in the play. It's actually Olas that comes across to Bernier, and, Ber and Bernier's shot is swallowed up by Luongo. Andy Green was number two in ice time per game for the Devils last year. As Santorelli bears it in, Richardson shoots. Oh, what a pad save by Schneider. And then Volchenkov goes sliding into the New Jersey goal, but Corey Schneider comes up with a great pad save again. Well, if there's one area that the, the Canucks have been gravely concerned with, it's their third line. Well, their third line was instrumental in the comeback win, and Mike Santorelli had a lot to do with it, with it in Calgary. Here he jumps on the loose puck and finds Brad Richardson. Richardson, who had his first goal as a Canuck, a shorthanded marker on Saturday, has a great chance from 20 feet out, and Schneider aggressively up on top of the paint gets a left pad on it. Santorelli signed as a free agent in the offseason, took a two-way deal, so it doesn't make much in the American League. That's, that's a gamble because it would make him easy to send down, but he wanted to come home, and he felt there was a spot for him here in Vancouver. That's real familiar for him. When he walks into the building, he sees his uncle, who is one of the security guards below the building, or below the rink down by the dressing rooms. His, his dad gets to as many games, Vince, as, as, as possible. Zedlinski drops, Elias plays it across, Yager scores! Yarmir Yager! His second goal in as many games, and the Devils lead 1-0. While well, the Canucks backed off at the blue line here, and that opens the door for these this talented duo to connect in Yager. His second in two games, and watch how deep the Canucks defense get. Hamhuis allows the blue line. Garrison is back 20 feet inside the blue line as he gets soft on the rush. Zidlitski to Eliash, and he threads the needle between Dale Weiss and Jason Garrison, and Yager's not going to miss too many times from there. The blue line backs off. It gives room for Eliash to handle the puck, and he makes a perfect backhand feed to Yager. 683rd career goal for Yager. As soon as this play develops into the middle of the ice, watch Yager get across, find the lane, and now he smells there's an opening. He gives it the beaver tap so Eliash can hear him. The pass is right on the tape, and Yager makes no mistake. I wonder if he's got the keys of the rink yet. Well, they got two of them next door to each other in yeah. Jersey, so he's probably got keys to one of them. Adam in Dallas. Often seen skating at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night with a weighted vest on. And the puck glove by Schneider, he shot down. Funny, before the game, Ray, we saw Yager talking to Glenn Gullitson, the assistant coach for Vancouver, who was his head coach in Dallas last year, and Yager had no idea that Gullitson had landed in the Vancouver with the Canucks. No, he saw him here on the bench. He said, oh, I didn't know you were here. How you doing? And then Glenn Gullitson came over to say hi to him. Gullitson's uh, an interesting part of this coaching staff, the head guy in Dallas last year in Tortorella, who, who has spoken about not knowing the Western Conference very well, said he's going to lean on him early for what type of teams they're playing and what their tendencies are. Here, Daniel Sedin. Back to Henrik. Much made of the fact that Sedin's were broken up with the third period against... Calgary with good results for Vancouver. There's something that Alain Vigneault didn't like to do very often. No, and I, 
you know, Tortorella said he didn't know if that helped spark the team. Well, in the next shift after they were split up, Henrik set up a goal. Two shifts later, Daniel set up a goal. It was like the team fed off the energy, and both of the Sedins helped produce both primary assists on goals in the third period. There's a puck played to the player's bench with seven seconds to go here in the opening period. And the Devils ahead by a score of one to nothing. Devils are playing game two of a five-game Canadian trip. Started in Edmonton last night. They'll be in Calgary Friday, then Winnipeg, then finish it off in Ottawa. So they won't have to go through customs very often, but it is an unusual trip for a team to go from one end of the Canadian part of the league to the other. They're trying to figure out where the face-off can be. It should be back in the New Jersey zone unless the puck was deflected. Referee or linesman Shane Heyer says it was deflected as the puck ended up on the Canucks bench, and so the draw will be outside the blue line here with just seven seconds remaining. Stanton sends it down, and Bryce Salvador will kick that to the corner. And for the second straight night, Yarmir Yager has patted his active goal scoring lead as the Devils lead at 1-0, and Corey Schneider terrific in the opening 20 minutes. Likely out at least a couple of weeks. A broken foot blocking a shot uh, for Burroughs. Jordan Schrader out. He, he broke his foot as well blocking a shot. And it's not just here in Vancouver. It's really, it's everywhere. Zubras tries to center that puck for Eliash. That's knocked away. And now Yannick Hansen back the other way with the Sedin. Hansen fires that wide of the goal out of the reach of Henrik Sedin. And Dan Ham uses clearing attempt. Goes off a leg right to Yager. Winding in on Garrison. Yager ready for help to arrive. Deals back in the corner, then Garrison steps into him. Zubras picks up the loose puck. Sends it back in front to Eliash. He was spun around. Feeds it there, and Luongo took a late bump from Yager. But was able to hang on. Coach Peter DeBoer told us that Yarmir Yager played well in games one and three of the season when he was rested. Here he is on back-to-back -back nights. He played 14 minutes last night in Edmonton. Look at how dangerous the Canucks feel he is. He's the only guy in the zone. They go two guys to the puck. Again, miscommunication. That allows Zubris to pick up the puck and then Eliash to get a relatively close scoring chance on Luongo. Zajac on it, being watched there by Kessler. And Michael Ryder comes in. Now Kessler has to slide that across to Edler, looking up for Higgins, who chips it down to the Canucks zone. Icing waved off as... Bryce Salvador goes back, and David Boone steps into him. Adam Henrique for Ryder. Can't clear it out. Back he goes to Kessler. Down to Higgins. To Edler. That long shot to Flex. Schneider able to get a glove on it and knock it down. And now the Devils are away. Three on two. Zajac to Ryder. Posts up and slides that by Edler. And now it's center ice a race for it. Booth has it knocked away by Peter Harrell. The X is stepping up. Long shot. Schneider steers that away. Now from the other side, Garrison shoots and through the traffic. Schneider made another save. And Bruner poked that head. It bounces to Klo. Back to Bruner. Rolling puck shoots. And Luongo makes the glove stop and hangs on. David Booth scored the other night in Calgary when he was on the doorstep and he deflected a point shot past Joey McDonald. And the Canucks were talking this morning about the need to get people to the front of the net. Here's that long shot off the Schneider pad. We talked about the Canucks working on that this morning in practice. And there's Chris Higgins right to the front of the net again as they look for a secondary shot and a deflection in front of Schneider. Well, Chankov shoots and Luongo steers that up and out of play. How much of a style change and how much of a shock to the system will Tortorella be for the Canucks? Well, I think there'll be an urgency demand that the players aren't quite used to. You know, they had done things for a certain way under a Lambino for seven seasons. They were a puck possession team. They played with the puck in a little bit more freewheeling style. The one thing that the Canucks are going to realize is they're going to get pushed hard to compete all over the ice, not just on the puck, not, not just on the back check. And it'll be different in the way that that's pushed to them from Tortorella. And it will be uncomfortable at times for everyone concerned. Yes, I mean, we also learned today from John that not only does he not like cell phones in the in the press room, but if you're late, he's going to walk then too. 
if yeah. the media wasn't ready to start. If you're not five minutes early, you're five minutes late. I always hated that rule. <laughs> I'm if, sure you did. Well, if you want to leave at 11 o'clock, then be there at 11 o'clock. Not when are you going to be there at 5 2? If you want to leave at 5 2 11, then it should be 5 2 11. A race for an icy waved off as Sestino got a, chip, a stick in there. In Tortorella's case, when the meeting's at 11, the door gets locked at 11. And I would suggest 10.59 <laughs> would be the right time to be there. Ray Ferraro in his prime, playing for John Tortorella in his. Oh, I think he would have liked me. Or, or not. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure there would have been a middle ground. but No, that's... That's very true. Bernier shoots. That's tip right on. Great oh. glove save by Luongo on the tip right in front by Ole. Real sharp save from Luongo. Not only does he make the glove stop, but he doesn't get a good look at it. As this puck's going to go around the boards and just shovel quickly to the front of the net. The puck doesn't have a lot of zip after it's deflected, but he's got to find it as Bernier gets it to the net. Olish's tip goes through the legs of Olish, past Garrison, and Luongo makes another good stop. Shots are 12-11, New Jersey. Yager's goal, the only one so far. As icing called against Vancouver. MLS on TSN. Coverage continues tomorrow with the Seattle Sounders FC and Colorado taking on the Rapids. Live coverage underway at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on TSN 2. Uh, 40,000 plus down there in Seattle. Yeah. You've been going here to some of the games? Yeah, we were in there. Uh, we were there again yesterday, or on Sunday, rather, just uh, one of the more remarkable goals I've seen live uh, as the Whitecaps striker Camilo scored on a bicycle. It was awesome. My little guy was just exploded out of his seat. It's been a lot of fun. Now I got Riley practicing bicycle kicks in the basement. What, what could go wrong? <laughs> yes, exactly. In comes Hanson across the line. Fires. He hammered that wide. Dan Zedin leaves it there for Edler, and it's banked out. We asked Tortorella today which players have maybe surprised him that he thought they're even better than I thought. He right away mentioned the Sedins, which everyone does in Vancouver, but then said Alexander Edler. And, and what he mentioned was that there were lots of, lots of games that he watched on tape where you just couldn't find Edler. He wasn't making an impact to the game, and then he came here and immediately saw, wow, he's got lots more to give. And really, that's been one of the talking points for Edler. Really since their Stanley Cup run in 2010, Gord, he played a, a watershed game where he had, a, had 10 hits, he played about 27 minutes, and it was just a remarkable performance, and everybody expects that performance every night. They're not going to get it, but they'd like to see something closer to that on a more regular basis. One trademark of the Tortorella slash Mike Sullivan regime, and Sullivan's been his longtime assistant, is they'll play their top defense pair a lot. You saw it last year in the playoffs with Girardi and McDonough. And you saw it in Tampa as well with Dan Boyle and Pavel Kabina. They'll play their horses on the back end a ton. Edler's never averaged more than 25 minutes in a game, but he may this year. In comes Booth with a chance. Shoots and Schneider makes a glove save on David Booth. Booth's goal in Calgary highlighted a pretty good effort for him. He's just getting out of training camp mode, as John Tortorella noticed this morning and when talking about Booth. But real nice move and nice patience for Booth as Ham Hughes keeps the puck in. And Booth likes to shoot the puck. He gets it here and he hangs onto it probably a step early, but he's got to get around the stick of the Devils defenseman. And when he does, Schneider can square up and make another nice glove stop. Now Tanev stepping up for Vancouver. Lachiano picks it up for Green. Andy Green being shadowed there by Santarelli. Plays it off the glass. And it's moved out by the Devils as Damian Bruder plays out ahead. Dale Weiss. Through the middle, finds Richardson. And Stanton's long shot into the midsection of Corey Schneider. Put your the Devils have been trying to pressure the puck up the wall when the Canucks break it out. They get real nice puck support here as Tanev gets to it quickly, finds Weiss, and then as Santarelli goes across the middle, you see behind him, 
is Brad Richardson. That's an easy breakout for the Canucks, but that's real good positioning. Weiss gets his head up. He looks to Santarelli. There's nowhere to go, so he looks behind him to the next guy, which is Richardson. And that's a 1-2 pass out of the zone, quickly executed. There's a puck off the glass and out by Steven Gianta. Canucks have San Jose coming here on Thursday. They'll welcome their 25 million fan that night. And then Montreal here on Saturday. Then they hit the trail for a seven-game, two-week road trip. There are times when that trip looks like they've lost their atlas. They kind of go from the New York area back to the Midwest and back to New York. That'll be quite a challenging trip for the Canucks. In comes Henrik Sedin, plays it rink wide to Bieksa, shoots, pad saved by Schneider. Puck loose in front, trickle wide. Daniel Sedin plays it off the side of the goal. Well, there's that next wave of attack as Bieksa jumps up into the rush as well. And now as Bieksa goes back, icing the call. The Canucks get four guys into the rush, and Henrik's got his head up as he normally does, and he goes straight across the ice to Bieksa. Quick shot, pad saved by Brodeur, and there's Santarelli on the front of the net as he goes to the net, and it's Bieksa's shot through, through the lane, stopped by Schneider. Santarelli can't get to the rebound. Now Higgins walks in and fires, and Schneider the save on him. And Bernier stepped into Hamhuis. Canucks defense this last couple of minutes is becoming far more aggressive down at the hash marks. We saw Tanev the last shift do that, keep the puck in. There was Ham Hughes doing the same thing. Now Kessler keeps it alive, sends it down in front. Higgins bobbled the puck and flipped it wide. And Andy Green steps into him. Higgins crisscrossing with Booth. Kessler there first for the Canucks. Bumps into Fane. Booth steps up again. The Devils bottle up for the moment. Now Bernier plays it ahead. Back down to the devil's zone as Kessler leaves it there for Higgins. His centering pass intercepted by Oleg. Long lead pass for Yager in behind the Vancouver defense. Garrison and Yager collide. Elias with a bouncing puck leaves it there for Yager. And Volchenkov steps up. His shot tipped wide by Elias. Now a chance here for the score! Elias shoots. The light is on. And it is a goal for the New Jersey Devils as Elias belatedly raises his arms. What an awful break for the Canucks here. Not just that the puck deflects in off of Luongo, but this puck hits Greg Kimmerly in the corner. The official's looking for a place to go. He's trying to get out of the zone or to get out of the way of the puck. And watch Kimmerly behind the net. The puck's going to get shot to the corner. He's going to try and get out of the way. Oops, it hits his foot. The Canucks skate past it. Eliash's shot deflects off of Dale Weiss's foot. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. Hamhuis is going to get the puck here. It goes off Kimmerly's foot. It goes through Hamhuis and goes right to Eliash. And you're going to see it deflect sharply off the foot of Weiss and through Luongo. No place the referee wants to be less than there. Kimmerly gets caught and it hits his foot. And Eliash, for the second game in a row, scores from about the same area yeah. in about the same way. And Tortorella just looked at Mike Sullivan and said, what happened there? And Sullivan shrugged and said, I don't know. And we're gonna look at it at the video. And as much as you can look at various mistakes that may be made on a play, sometimes you just get rotten luck. So Eliash appears to be a pretty good billiards player. Yes. Scored 14 goals last year for the Devils. And now Kimberly has the puck hit him again. And the Devils again get possession. Henrik looking for Ryder. And is scooped up by Edler who fires out ahead to Hansen. Hansen's out there along with Richardson and Weiss for the moment. Now Santorelli had that last shift with the Sedins. As we know that Tortorelli showed in Calgary will not be shy if he thinks something's not working. So he's flipped Santorelli and, and Hansen at this point. Shots are 14-13 Vancouver, but the Devils have a 2-0 lead. Last night, the Devils blew a three-goal third-period lead, the third time since 1991 they've done that. Now 
now Richardson battling for it. There were times in the old NHL where you could show a movie on the scoreboard when the Devils had a two-goal lead. It was that much of a sure thing. Well, when they had Brodeur in the heyday and Stevens and Niedermeyer and Rafalski in. Oh, my goodness. Danico, there was just no chance. They checked like a cult. In comes Henrik Sedin. Walks it and fires. Schneider, the pad save on him. Sedin really shoots off the side of the goal. Now back goes to Stanton. Across to Tanev. Drops it for Daniel Sedin. Shoots, scores! Daniel Sedin answers back, and it's 2-1. An absolute wrestling match going on in front of Corey Schneider that will break up just in time for the puck to come. But this play starts with Mike Santorelli's work to get to the loose puck. The puck will go to the point. Look at Harold battling for position with Henrik Sedin. They clear the zone. This puck's deflected by Anton Volchenkov. It actually turns out to be a perfect deflection by Volchenkov as he tips it behind the left pad of Corey Schneider. One bounces in a Weiss at one end, one off of Volchenkov at the other, and the Canucks are on the board. Yeah, the Canucks had that one coming. So a 2-1 game. Halfway through the second period, Schneider has to wait for it now with Kessler tapping his stick on the ice, trying to trick his old teammate. Now Tanev back with it. Plays it across to Stanton. His long shot kicked away by Schneider. Higgins back on it. As the pace picks up here now, midway through the second. Booth on it. Knocked down by Salvador. And poked out by Klo. Salvador fires it in as the Devils make a change. And Stanton fires that down as Salvador goes back. Icing waved off, plays it ahead to Zubras along with Yager. And Elliott. Cam Hughes looks ahead as the Canucks are changing. And streaking in is Daniel Sedin. Drops it for Hendricks. Santorelli back playing the wing of this line. This is three shifts in a row. This is a, a flip of the wingers, not just a one-time thing. Elias fires, and Luongo hangs on to that. Daniel Sedin has his second goal of the year. The Canucks first on the night. And the Canucks are back within one. In their 13th year in Vancouver, the Sedins are steady like the rent. Here's Brian Lalji with more. Gord, you mentioned earlier the Twins were split up for the third period in Calgary the other night. They also got split up for a couple of shifts in the first period tonight. They're back together. Now, Henrik says he expects them to be split up much more under John Tortorella than they ever were against Elaine Vigneault, and he's okay with that. It doesn't change his role. Henrik will always be a playmaker, but he believes that when Daniel is not playing with him, Daniel also tries to be a playmaker. It's something the Canucks don't want to see much of. They need Daniel to be a goal scorer. His goal totals were down last year, but he has managed 12 shots in the last two games, including that goal in the last shift. Yager across the line, and the play is offside. A real skid for Daniel down the stretch last year. Two goals the last 17 games. He said one of his focuses this year was to get one shot more per game. He had 12 in the first three this year. This would be one of those chances. He's, he's out in the high slot. He's supporting the puck. He just takes it and fires into the net. And when Volchenkov gets a stick on it, what's a rather harmless shot turns into his second goal of the season. 17-14, the shots on goal in favor of Vancouver now as Daniel comes in and fires again, and Schneider steers that away. Yager, and they go off a skate, and now Zubris with it. Dinah Zubris re up with the Devils in the offseason as well, as Yager plays it in. Of course, the hammer blow to New Jersey in some ways, the loss of Ilya Kovalchuk, as Henrik brings that in offside. Well, the cost to get him was prohibitive. In so many ways, financially, and they'll forfeit a first-round pick in next year's draft as part of the punishment, but they catch a break financially, but still, that hole in the lineup is so hard to fill for a team that Ray was last in the league in even strength goals last year with him in the lineup. And the one thing that will change is they'll get more people involved on the power play. I mean, Kovalchuk is one of the game's best shooters, and they'll have to make do without that but they've tried a, a more collective approach and they're hoping to get you know 15 goals from five guys 
to try and offset that. The intriguing story in New Jersey, too, centers on Adam Larson, fourth overall in the 2011 draft. A healthy scratch tonight for the first time this year. 11 times last year, and at the age of 20, still not blossoming the way they'd hope. Yannick Weber fires. He hammered that high and wide. Weber can really shoot it. And now here's Stanton with a try. That hit the leg of Payne in front. Now Santorelli tries to center it. This is Hanson with Dalpy and Santon. Sestito, rather. Two-thirds of the fourth line for Vancouver as the Canucks trail 2-1 here in the second. Back in Vancouver, well, next week the Canucks will embark on a seven-game, two-week road trip as John Tortorella gets his first taste of Western Conference travel, Ray. That's going to be quite a test for them as the Canucks head out on one of their lengthiest road trips. Certainly their most stringent one since the Olympic break when they were gone, it seemed, for the entire month of February. And Tortorella said he consulted with several different people, including Mike Gillis and including the trainers about what exactly goes on on one of these long road trips is he's this is far different than anything that he's had for quite some time certainly being in the Eastern Conference the Rangers travel less than most teams to Vancouver which travels more than most San Jose the most traveled team in the NHL the Canucks are usually second depending on the schedule now Hamus has to go back and there's icing called against New Jersey so he's talked to the Canucks sleep doctor as well who advises them on when they should rest when they should travel after a game when they shouldn't and he mentioned that one of the first things he did when he got the schedule was he looked on the schedule for rest days not practice days as he knew it was going to be an adjustment for him and his team now booth down with it plays that back to garrison a long shot and higgins got a stick on that tipped it wide Ryder plays it off the glass and back down to the canuck zone 745 to go in the second period Now Booth rink wide for Higgins. Puts that wide of the goal, and Salvador goes back for it. Pumped by Kessler, forces the turnover. The centering pass goes all the way back to Garrison. And Jason Garrison pounds it off the end boards. Didn't get the bounce he was looking for. Higgins tries to center it, goes off the leg of Zidlitsky. And Henrique pokes that ahead to Ryder. Salvador back for it. Icy called against the Canucks. As the Canucks were making their third period comeback in Calgary the other night, Tortorella was asked what he thought he liked best about it, and he said that nobody gave in. They found a way to get back into it, maybe because they realized what a great job Eddie Lack was doing in goal for them, making his first start of the season. And after that goal here, the Canucks have started to become a little more engaged again. We saw their defense pinching down the boards. We saw Tanev do it and Ham Hughes on back-to-back -back shifts. Here's a different look, Ray. You've got Henrik Sedin centering David Booth and Daniel Sedin. So we got Booth now playing the Centrelli spot. Well, with 11 forwards, there's going to be a little bit of juggling the pot around for, for them, but he'll look for what fits best. Now Fain has that pass intercepted by Booth. He's away with Henrik. Chips it back to Daniel. Daniel to Henrik. Works his way in, slides that rink wide. Edler in, shoots, that was blocked. And that staggered Ryan Kloh. And now Daniel was jumping off the mark, and Kloh is really struggling. Edler back to the exit. He fires, it's off the foot of Green, who plays it out. Blocks Yonov, chipped it, but not far enough. Kloh still can't get off the ice. In comes Daniel with it now. Sends it back, loose in front of Edler, scores! Alex Edler with a beauty, and the game is tied! This essentially became a five-on-four, as you see Ryan Klo on the Devils bench here. He blocked an earlier shot by Edler with his right foot. And when he limps off the ice, you're going to see Klo right here. Kind of step and a half it off the ice. He goes right by the play. He can't stay on the ice. He can't even move. A gorgeous feed across. And a player that would normally be picked up is wide open. Look at Edler. He starts the play to Hendrick, and then he gets on it. And he takes the pass from Daniel with his skates and beats Corey Schneider up over the blocker. I did in my what's bugging Ray. One of the things that really bothers me is players that are required to block shots and none of them seem to, or not enough of them, 
seem to have any foot protection. Klo doesn't. Man, he's hurting right now as he's trying to get the feeling back in his foot. The problem is he won't know how bad this is. Oh, as he gets that on the inside of the right foot, he won't know how bad this is until he gets his foot out of his skate, which he's not going to do unless he knows he's done for the night. The puck's moving faster than ever before. The players want skates lighter than ever before, and it's not a great combination, right? And they don't want to wear the shot blockers because they're a little clunky, and they feel that it's a little more awkward to skate. There's a number of players out all around the league as a result of blocking shots. You would think somebody would start working on something more comfortable or a little smaller that the guys could wear. Now a chance for Hansen with a drive that was blocked by Zidlitsky. Hansen knocked down the clearing attempt, but did so with a high stick. And play is called with 5.33 to go in the second period. And the Canucks have drawn even as Edler has his first of the year. Signed last year to a long-term extension that kicked in this July 1st. There was some talk that the Canucks would move Edler before his no-trade kicked in. I think that would be asinine. This kid's got just about everything going for him. There's another gear to be found here, and the Canucks are going to try and find it with Alex Edler, but he jumps into the play. What a nice play, picking it up with his right foot, getting it up to his stick, and then having the patience and hands to take it to the forehand and throw it up over Corey Schneider's blocker. Now a lead pass to Steven Gianta working in. Hope checked by Stanton as Gianta goes into the corner for it. After blowing a three-goal lead last night, the Devils have surrendered a two-goal lead tonight. Wonder when the last time that happened was. The 80s. Now Booth with no stick was helpless. And Stanton on the second try, and the third couldn't get it out. Now it bounces to 10. Abu plays the puck out to center right. In comes Eliade. Try to drop that for Yager, intercepted by Richardson. Salvador, up ahead for Eliash, chipped by 10, Evan back goes Edler for it. Now Yager with a puck at his feet, knocked away from him. And Hansen in across the line, drops it off to Kessler. And that snapped Kessler's stick. Are they chanting Schneider? Yes, they are. I think they are. Lead pass to Hansen, in he comes. Yannick Hansen shoots, stopped by Schneider. Zubris able to just chip that out. So seconds after being serenaded by the fans, Schneider comes up with another good save. Harold through the middle. Talakshian up and Klo chips that back down. There's the X on it, turns it over. And a chance in front for Lakshiana couldn't poke that home as Bruner set him up. Now Daniel and Henrik back out there with Santorelli. There's a revolving door on the right side for the Twins. Maybe somewhere Anson Carter's on an exercise bike hoping to get his old spot back. Yeah, he, he had a couple of good years in that spot. If you can find the open space and shoot the puck, you're probably in pretty good hands. Great hands. Here comes Henrik. Rink wide for Daniel. Try to send that back in front. Volchenkov blocked that pass. And locks Yonov away with it for New Jersey. Hammered there by Dan Hamuse right in front of you. You did a much better job avoiding that hit than he did. In comes Santorelli with a shot and Schneider, the glove save. Just as the crowd starts chanting Schneider, Schneider, he gets a break away from Yannick Hansen and turns it aside, but it's really an odd play. Kessler's going to break his stick here. Now watch Hansen, 36. As he starts on the back check, he hands his stick to Kessler. Kessler now goes into the play. Hansen comes off the bench. And when the puck is turned over, Hansen's standing all by himself up at the far blue line. That's not his stick. He took it off of someone down at the far end of the bench. The puck ended up on his stick. Kessler had Hansen's stick. Hansen had some other right-handed stick from the end of the bench and he gets a breakaway with it. And now fired down to the Canucks zone, icing called 
against New Jersey. Well, the Thanksgiving Classic kicks off this week with Wednesday's Friday Night Football. The Lions and the Calgary to take off the Stampeders. Live coverage underway at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific here on TSN. We'll be in Calgary tomorrow night for the Canadians and the Flames. Pretty good start for the Calgary Flames. And the bar was pretty low for them. Most people f figure they'll be among the, the least productive teams in the National Hockey League. And we had them in Washington in their first game. They played hard. They had a 4-1 lead that they ended up kicking away. They had a, a third period lead against the Canucks. They've, they've played hard. They've scored more than, than most have thought as well. Picking up some points along the way. Bob Hartley has one thing that they've established, and that is that they will work hard. <laughs> they may be undermanned sometimes, but they are going to work hard. It's been very impressive to watch. Now Ender brings it in, fires that down long on Schneider. He'll have to hang on with Higgins looking for the loose puck. Well, the game settles in, and it just becomes a regular National Hockey League game for Corey Schneider. When you go back and play against a former team, the, the get up to the game is, is just, you're filled with so many emotions and you want to do so well and you just want to get your first shift out of the way and, and just get started. And at this point now, he's just playing a team in blue. It doesn't really matter anymore that it's the Canucks. He was really good here last year, won his last eight starts in this building. Three of them were shutouts. Zubras to Eliash. Under two minutes to go in the second period. Yager brings it in. He's been a central figure tonight. Now tipped across by Eliash. Zubras trying to tap it back. And that's the line. Zubras spilled Henriksen. E. Now Daniel with it. Fires it down to the devil zone. Zidliski knocks it away from Santorelli. And away comes Eliash. Looking rink wide at Yager. Chips it by Tanev. Yager comes in. Spills two Canucks. Zubris puts it down for Eliash, knocked away by Tanev. Here's Harold with it. Down to Yager. Garmir Yager to Peter Harold. Devils are changing. Harold winds and fires it through the screen of Zubris. Luongo makes the save. Pretty good shot by Harold as he takes the puck off the boards, walks the line, and gets himself into good position to shoot it. The Canucks can't get anyone there in front of it. Deflected a little bit out 25 or 30 feet from Luongo, but he's able to, to catch it just underneath the crest. Off the face-off win by Kessler. Here's Hansen, along with Higgins and Kessler. And they battle in the corner for it. Higgins still with it. Down to Hansen. In the final minute now. And it's picked up by Harold. His pass knocked down by Hamhues. Bounces right to Higgins. And Higgins sent that rig wide, just missed Kessler. Hamhues to Garrison on the line. Garrison risked that wide. Harold being watched by Hansen, flips that to center right. Twenty-two fifteen of the shots on goal in favor of the Canucks. And away comes David Booth. Now Booth steps around Green. Still with it. Shovels that back. Ham used to Garrison a drive. Hit a leg in front. Schneider's down. The puck still loose. And it squirts out to Close. So Ryan Close back out there for New Jersey. And Bruner has it in the final second of the second period. Here they come again. Booth in. Shoots. Schneider the save. The rebound cleared away by Green. Booth tries to center it. And Bruner able to clear that out. So the Devils grab a 2 nothing lead. But the Canucks chip away. 2-2 the score after 40 minutes of play as we send you to our second admission and James Duffin. So we'll see if playing on back-to-back -back nights is a factor for the Devils. The Canucks well-rested coming in. Although it is their third and four nights. They played back-to-back -back on the weekend. They had the day off yesterday. And here's Santorelli back out with the Sedin. Gord, you sorry, Gord, you mentioned that tiredness that we'll take a peek at. 
the Devils started to run around in their zone over the last five or six minutes, and the pace goes high. It's going to be tough for them here on the second of two nights. Santorelli knocked down by Zajac. There's only been one power play in the game. That was in the first period. Went to the Canucks. As that shot from Hamhuis goes wide. The Devils don't take many penalties, and they don't draw a whole lot as well here. They just have taken eight penalties on the season. Last year, New Jersey went into a tailspin at the end of the year. Won just four of the last 16 games and missed the playoffs for the second time in three years. Yager comes dancing into the high slot. That's knocked away from him by Garrison. And Higgins chips it by Zidlitsky. The X is stepping up. Zidlitsky jumps up on that loose puck, and the Devils break in three on two. Yager. Works it in, trying to drop that back for Zuber as the pass goes off a stick between two Canucks and back to Elias. His long shot goes just wide. Uh, this isn't going to be a game that Kessler's going to throw into his scrapbook. This has been a real tough 42 minutes for him so far. Just one shot attempt in the first two periods. Seems to be wandering on the ice instead of going anywhere with a purpose. The Exa steps into Bruner to the puck, loose down low to Elias. Patrick Elias back to Peter Harrell. Across the ball, Chinkov with a shot, steered away by Luongo. Devils took a 2-0 lead in the game before the Canucks came back to equalize. And Harold back for it. 23-17, the shots for Vancouver. As Luongo leaves it there for Tanev. Another player pointed out by Tortorella as a player he's really liked in his short time in Vancouver. Now Klo battling for it. And Weiss chips that ahead for Booth. In behind Fane, David Booth. Sharp angle shot, and Schneider makes the save on that and hangs on. Here again is Farhan Lalji. Guys, I had a chance to talk to Pete DeBoer between periods. He really liked the way his team started that second period, especially the first five minutes. But they got outshot 12-5 to five over the final 15. He said they were playing on their heels. They were tentative, and he compared it a lot to last night's third period meltdown on the road. He certainly expects them to get the pucks deep. He did, they did a lot more of that in the first uh, two minutes of this third period, so he's going to like their aggressive start that he was looking for. Devils still winless on the year, have a couple of shootout losses on the docket. It would be unthinkable, though, back in the day for the Devils to blow a two- or three-goal lead, certainly when Scott Stevens was patrolling the blue line. And there he is, looking as intimidating as ever, even in the glasses. Wow, did you ever need to know where he was on the ice? Just the threat that he might come across with a, a steamroller was enough to, to make you just a tad tentative going into the devil's zone. Remember when the Devils won the cup back in 2000, and Scott Gomez is a rookie, and he, he chirped Stevens with the cup in the room. They were celebrating a win. And Stevens gave him a look that froze Gomez right in his tracks. As only he could do. And great to see him back involved and in the game he loves so much. Elias tries to glove that down. The puck goes to Zajac. And here's Garrison leaving it there for Ham Hughes. Three and a half gone in the third period. Devils' journey across Western Canada will continue in Calgary on Friday. They'll leave right after the game tonight. Daniel Sedin, a center, really with a shot. He put it high and wide. And here's Stanton with it. Rink wide he goes. Tanav looks down for Santorelli. Bumping there with Green. And Cole back on it. Chips it up for Harold, and the Devils are away. Peter Harold wraps that around for Gianta. Being bumped there by 10 out of the puck, loose to Henrik Sedin. Doubles it ahead to Daniel. And the Canucks will change as Bryce Salvador sends it in. Salvador with more ice time through the first two periods than any player on either team. And Higgins now slaps that down in the double zone as Salvador goes back. Kessler trying to force that puck free. It bounces up to Eliad. Along with Yager, in comes Patrick Elliott. Tops it back to Zubris. Ian on Kessler, Zubris shoots, and Luongo got a piece of that. Now Higgins trying to knock it out, and Fiend's all over him. Yager reaching for it, Kessler took it away. 
a real nice play by Fane because if he doesn't get to that puck, the Canucks are off to, off to the races. A little bit of a desperation play as he moved in as the Devils attacked. Now a steal by Hanson, sends it in front, tip wide by Higgins. Heather with a rolling puck, he hammered it wide. Out it goes to Bieksa, bouncing puck, he was able to keep inside the offensive zone as Green plays it around to Zubras. And Kessler has that knocked away by Henrique. Now a race for it, Edler and Adam Henrique. Rostislav Olej on it. Bumped off the puck by Weiss. And Edler finds Weiss, who chips it out neatly for Kessler. Up ahead to Booth, streaking in on Harrell. And Weiss slammed Harrell down from behind. Olej up ahead for Bruner. Damian Bruner chips that down to the Vancouver zone as Ham Hughes goes back for it. Weiss tried to kick that ahead, now chips out the rolling puck to Ham Hughes. He'll backhand that down to the Devils zone as Schneider is back to wait for it. Corey Schneider had a great first period for New Jersey as the Canucks were all over the Devils. Now Ryder bounces that down as Steve Bernier looks for it. In comes Ryder. Down to Bernier. Bernier chips it down to Zajac. Now Fane with a long shot. That's tipped just wide. And Bernier back on it. Santarelli. Able to chip that ahead for Ryder. But now we do have a penalty being called. It'll be a hooking call to Henrik Sedin. And the New Jersey Devils will get their first power play of the game. Here in the third period. The Devils will get their first power play with 13 and a half left here in the third period. It's, as an unlikely source for the penalty, as you can imagine, Henrik Sedin gets the hooking call as he gets behind Andy Green, and when he tries to slow him up, he gets his stick through the hands of Green. The hooking call is made, and the Devils will have their veterans on the ice. Eliash, Ryder, Yager. And Yager just picked up a point. It changed the scoring on the Elias goal and had an assist to Yager. So he's got a goal and an assist tonight. The Canucks penalty killing has been exemplary so far this season. They've killed off all 14 opposition power plays they've seen and scored two shorthanded goals. They certainly don't give you any room to handle the puck. Very aggressive on it. Zidlitsky for Elias. Yager circling in the high slot. Now showing across. Edler's got some time. Plays it off the boards and down the ice. Zizitsky being pressured there by Higgins. Finds Yager. Seven gone in the third period. 2-2 two -two the score. Yager ahead to Elias. Chip set by Edler. Edler spun him around. And Elias looks back at the official thinking there should have been a penalty. Now Green with it. Up ahead to Yager, chips that in right to Bieksa. And Bieksa very easily sends it back down to the Devils line. Zidlitsky to Adam Henry. Two years ago, a Calder Trophy finalist for the Rookie of the Year award. Late last year, a healthy scratch for the Devils. Now Henry can across the line, drops it off for Bernier. Taps that back to Green. To Bernier working in. Bernier shoots. Luongo saves the puck loose in front. Luongo down. And he finds the puck underneath Dan Hamhuse and hangs onto it. Eight of the nine guys on the ice are within a foot of the goal crease. And Roberto Luongo checking might have taken a stick in the face. Shot from Bernier is going to go through. Luongo will see the puck bounce up on Ham Hughes's shoulder. We'll see where he gets the stick probably right there from Bernier. As Bernier is looking for the loose puck. Henrique and Ham Hughes are right in the goal crease fighting for it. Luongo's finally going to get to it. And he takes a stick on the chin. Now if the face-off win by Zajac, here's Harold with it. 35 seconds to go on the power play. Jay Jack rink wide for Bryce Salvador. A little bit of an odd guy to have on the power play. 
His long shot is blocked. He hasn't scored in 141 games, the second longest streak in the league. John Scott Buffalo is the holder of the longest goalless drought currently in the NHL. And now Hansen with it. Squeezes that ahead, and Harold has to hustle back with Higgins bearing down on him. There's that aggressiveness, Gord, I was talking about earlier as Higgins chases Hansen down the ice and essentially kills the last 20 seconds of the power play. One shot on goal for the Devils on that power play as Bieksa plays it across to Edler. Love to hit by Green. Zubris had to leave it. And here's Fain ahead to Yager. Yager up for Elias. The puck bounces down to Bieksa, who flips it up in the air and up to center ice. Now Zubris. Head to Elias. After Galeas with a rolling puck, centers it. And it got by everyone down to Daniel Sedin. Rick Whitey goes to Bieksa. Back in front for Henrik. He got spun around. And a penalty coming up. It'll be a hooking call against the Devils. So the Canucks, after killing off the Jersey power play, will get one of their own with 10.48 to go in the third. And Patrick Elias is not happy about it. At the end of the second period, we showed how the Canucks started to get a little more involved from their defense onto the onto the rush. And it, on this play, it's Bieksa getting into the rush. There's the hook from Elias. He gets his stick into the hands of Henrik Sedin right there. And while he may not like the call, that's one that should be made. So the Canucks second power play in a 1-1, in a 2-2 game rather, with a chance to take the lead. The Sedins, Ryan Kessler up front, Edler and Garrison on the back end. And Garrison with the bouncing puck, plays it across to Henrik. Kessler in the high slot. Here's Daniel down low. Working in behind the Devils goal. Kessler fighting for space. Plays it across to Henrik Sedin. In comes Henrik. Back door for Daniel. Knocked away by Zajac. Cross it goes to Henrik. Back to Garrison. To Henrik. Shoots. Blocked by Salvador at the line. Held by Garrison. Now Edler walks in. Being harassed by Henrik. Drops it back to Garrison. Lots of traffic. Garrison fires. And that fell to Adam Henrik. And Henrik lifts his way to the Devils bench. Heard an O from the Vancouver bench when that hit. They know how Garrison shoots the puck, how Edler shoots the puck, and Henrik was on the receiving end of that. In comes Kessler, shoots, and Schneider the glove save on Ryan Kessler. Kessler's first shot on the power play off the rush, and Schneider's able to, to make the glove stop. Sometimes on the power play you see something that's a little open and you shoot it on the rush, but aside from getting the face off, this becomes a dead play pretty quickly as the, the Canucks have gone 53 seconds on this power play. They'll have just about a minute seven left as a timeout is called. Yeah, it's Tortorella calls timeout here. Wants to talk it over, give this top unit a break. Tortorella talking to the defenseman down at the Canucks end as we showed earlier how much they rely on those two point men and really this timeout was just in essence to get their five guys, their number one unit, a little breather as the, the group en masse comes back on the ice. 9.55 to go in the third period, 108 to go in this power play. Henrik Sedin to face off against Travis Zajac. Scramble draw, won by the Devils, but Votinko falls ever across the Garrison, hammers that on goal, and Schneider makes the save. One of the tenets of a good power play is once you don't have the puck, you have to find somebody to go retrieve it. We talked about Kessler not having a very good night so far. Look how quickly he gets to this loose puck, and because he wins the retrieval for it, the Canucks don't chase it down the ice. They get a shot on goal. Yeah, Schneider makes the save, but they get to stay in the zone again. Puck kept alive by Edler. Here's Daniel, sends that right on, and Schneider kicks it away. 
Harrison with that long stick reached out to play it, but Gianta knocked it away. Unusual to see a guy who shoots it as well as Garrison use that long stick. Here's Henrik back with it. And here's Garrison. With time to Edler. Shoots that was off a stick and wide. Daniel Sedin with it. 25 seconds to go on the power play. Henrik centers a bouncing puck in front. Voltenko reaching for it. And Daniel plays it around for Henrik. Canucks have not yet led in the game. Henrik to Daniel. In tight, Daniel steps back, plays it back for Kessler. It's skipped away from him. Here's Edler with it now. Crisscrossing with Garrison. Down to Henrik. Loose in front. Salvador knocked it away. And Eliash steps out of the box. Now a chance for Salvador ahead to Eliash. Two shots on goal for the Canucks on that power play. Eliash centers it. Knocked away by Edler. Here's Zubras playing it back down behind the Canucks goal. Bain steps up to keep it alive for New Jersey. And here's Yager. Jaramir Yager back to Mark Payne. His long shot tipped right on. Luongo the save. And the rebound tapped wide by Eliade. Don't forget, four of these five Canuck players have been on the ice for most of the last two and a half minutes. And in comes Yager with a shot. And Luongo makes the stop on him. Canucks with their chances here in the third period. Henrik Sedin and the Canucks looking for the go-ahead goal. Catch the season premiere of Arrow and the new series of Tomorrow People sharing the night to save the day. It all starts tomorrow at 7 on CTV. Eight oh six to go here in the third period. Canucks and Devils even at 2. Both these teams have seen their share of overtime and shootouts in the opening week of the NHL season. points the Devils have so far from a pair of shootout losses. Here comes Booth across the line for Vancouver being watched there by Lakshyanov as Booth took a whack at him. The puck loose in the corner. Weiss battling for it. And Lakshyanov looks ahead for Klo. In comes Brad Richardson. Being watched there by Fane who then slams him into the corner boards. And Green tied up by Booth. Richardson on it, got bumped there by Lakshyanov, and Bruner couldn't clear it out. Now Booth picks up the loose puck, drops it back for Tanev. Chris Tanev centers it, Schneider knocks it down, Bruner's away for New Jersey, and he goes to Klo. Really nice play by Tanev as he got in on the, on the offense and then came all the way back and was stronger than the Devils on the puck to retrieve it back. Chipped in by Kessler, back goes Zidlitsky for it. Seven to go in the third period, Zidlitsky. For Rostislav Olej making his New Jersey Devils debut. Has history with Devils coach Peter DeBoer. They were together in Florida together. But Olej scored 20 goals for the Panthers. Had some knee problems. He's lost his way a little bit when he went to Chicago. Spent all of last year in the American League, primarily a salary cap casualty as the Hawks buried his cap number in the American League. And then only played 14 games after hurting his knee again. Now Yager with the steal, tries to center it. Henrik Sedin knocks it away to Daniel. Up ahead for Santorelli. Mike Santorelli's played a lot in this game. On pace for a 20-minute night. And Santorelli to Daniel. Over for Henrik. Now knocked down by Daniel Sedin. And play continues. In comes Michael Ryder for New Jersey. Bumped there by Edler. Ryder still digging for it. And Booth on it. Zajac all over him. Back of the line for Fane. His shot drifts well wide. And a big hit on Salvador as we stepped into him. And in the corner, Kevin Bieksa is down. 
And just now getting to his feet. He took a stick up towards his ear, just getting to the bench. In comes Weiss with a shot. Schneider the save, juggles the rebound, but hangs on. 5-11 to go here in the third period. The X is shaken up, and Weiss. No worse for wear on the Canucks bench is Kevin BX, and we saw at the tail end of that last sequence the, the stick from Travis Zajac here catches him on the ear. Zajac's just trying to lift his stick over BX's head, and he ends up whacking him on the side of the helmet. That'll give you a, a ringing in your ear. That doesn't feel very good. Not that many do, but your, your ear hurts more than most. Sidlitsky back for Bernier, able to chip that out. Now Stanton to Tanev. Who's going to pry this thing open in the last five minutes of the third period? Kessler chops that in front. Higgins with the backhand shot, and Schneider makes the save. Quick test for Schneider off the forecheck is... Schneider just pokes the puck here to the defense. He doesn't really give him many options with it. Bernier turns it over. Good work from Kessler to Higgins. Higgins' backhand is swallowed up. But here Schneider, when he shovels the puck, he puts Bernier in a bad spot. He's either go, got to go past him or reverse it around the back of the net. He doesn't. Good work by Kessler to get it to Higgins. Sedin back with Santorelli. Henrik wins the draw back for Hamuse. In for Santorelli. Steps around Gianta. Shovels that in front. And Henrik Sedin couldn't reach it. Now Garrison down for Santarelli, the Burnaby native. Knocked out the line by Hamus, who sweeps it in, but the play was offside. Shane Heyer with the call right at the line. Quick change for the Canucks on this offside. You see a real close pay at the blue line as you mentioned Gordon the line's been standing right over top of it and oh, from that look it looks like it's still on the blue line the puck has to come all the way out or go all the way in on either entry or exit from the zone Payne's lead pass for Zuber is out of his reach shots are 29 20 Vancouver Fair to say that Schneider held the Devils in early. And a backhand shot by Hanson swatted away. Good diving play by Hanson to get that puck to Higgins. Zuber's trying to squeeze that by Hanson. Eliash can't get it out. And Green goes across to Fane. Up ahead to Yager. Hanson across the line. Yager took a slash from Kessler. And the play was offside at the Devils line. Kessler's come alive here in the last five or six minutes. Been more in the guts of the game where he plays his best is when he's involved all over the ice. He's had a real quiet night, but lately has been more involved with the play. Tortorella will use a short bench, and he's down to almost two lines here for the closing five minutes as he's rotated the Sedins and Kessler's line over the last couple of shifts. In comes Daniel Sedin, drops it off to Henrik. Backhands that in front, hits Santorelli with it. Now Garrison, rolling puck, fires, tipped wide by Salvador. Henrik falls in behind the jersey goal, and Henrik picks it up. Adam Henrik flips that into the Devils bench on the clearing attempt, and the faceoff will come back down to the jersey zone. Tomorrow night, it's Scotiabank Wednesday night in hockey, as the Montreal Canadiens visit to get a Western swing of their own. They're in Calgary to take on the Flames. Live coverage at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Here on TSN. How about the Canadians been carried by their youngsters? Yeah. Offensively, Lars Eller and Alex Gilchenyuk and Brendan Gallagher. That one line's got, what, five of their seven goals so far? Yeah, they've, uh, of the players, I think Eller has taken just an enormous step. He's shown some offensive capabilities that you wondered a little bit if they were there, but he's confident. He's in the middle of the ice with the two youngsters, done a terrific job. Now fired down by the Canucks. That'll be icing with 3.13 to go in the faceoff back to the Vancouver end. Canucks have already used their timeout. 
So you have a, a bit of a mishmash of a third line with Richardson, Booth, and Weiss on the ice against the Devils' top line, which has Yager and Eliash and Dana Zubris is going to take the draw here. Now Yager reaching for it. Richardson trying to poke it away. And Bieksa looks ahead to Weiss. He ran headlong into Volchenkov. A heavyweight collision there. Harold up for Eliash along with Yager. Edler kicked that away, and from his knees, Bieksa sweeps the puck out of the zone. 2.45 to go in the third. Fane to Green. Intercepted by Hansen. And back he goes to Ryder. Oles can't chip it out here. Stink. Shot goes off a leg right to Booth, who shoots. That's deflected wide. Now Stanton back with it, down low to Kessler, that pass intercepted by Zajac, and Booth takes it right back. And now Ryder chips that to Oledge, but it's gathered up by Tanev. Dane to Ryder. Two to go now in the third. Devils have stopped trying to make plays from their blue line. And get it, throw it off the boards, and clear it out of the zone. Playing for another point. That's fine, but you're not going to get two that way. Edler's lead pass between Higgins and Sedin. And again, the Canucks ice the puck in the faceoff back to the Vancouver zone. That's the last two, to go. Sorry, Gord, that's the last two times that Edler's had the puck and tried to advance it. A pretty good distance that it's gone for icing. This time he throws it right between, as you mentioned, Sedin and Higgins. And Henrik wasn't even looking for the puck. Higgins had already crossed through the lane, and that puck was pretty easily down the ice. And this at the end of a fairly long shift for this forward group. Off the face-off win. Here's Yager. Yager shoots. He whistled that wide. Now back goes to Zelitsky. Lots of traffic. Lane was blocked by Higgins. Now Salvador is shot. Belongo knocks that to the side of the goal. The exit got bumped by Yager. Now Yager reaches in court. Edler stepped into him. Yager hooked down Edler. And referee Dan O'Halloran says play on. Another shot by Zidlitsky right on. Belongo knocks that away. And Santarelli at the line but not out. Played back in by Salvador. The jersey will change. Here's Edler with it. Pass swatted up by Eliash. And Bernier ahead to Zajac. In comes Travis Zajac. Backhands that around. At the line. Feed trying to hold it. Henrik Sedin kicking at it. And body on the line, but not out. Zajac. Cross he goes. Bernier is shot. Luongo the save. 25 seconds to go in the third period. Eliash kicking at it. Looking down for Bernier. Gives Edler a shove. The puck's still loose down there as Edler has it under his skate. Ten seconds to go in the period. Bernier desperately trying to poke that free. And at the line, here's Green. Across to Zidlitsky. Winds and fires a dribble. Puck goes just wide. Bernier tries to center it. The Devils come oh so close, but this game is going to overtime. Carefully, don't let that go too long. Down in Philadelphia, they pulled the trigger this week. Craig Berube got his first National Hockey League win tonight, a 2-1 win against Florida. When we go to OT, Zidlitsky ahead for Ryder, the pass offside at the Canucks line. It's always an overtime you you look at a rush up the ice, it'll always be a two-on-two two until one team gets a defenseman into the rush and see who controls the puck first. And if a D-man can get in, you would think the Canucks would be more aggressive from the blue line. We've, the X has had a real aggressive last 30 minutes of this game jumping up into the play. Now Garrison taps that back for Tanev to Henrik Sinead. Up there along with Daniel. This is Daniel with it now. Drops it back to Henrik. 
Winds his way through center ice with Daniel. Salvador closed quickly on him. Now along the wall, Salvador re-engages with Henrik Sedin. At the line, held by Tana to Henrik. And Salvador once again intercepts, has some time, and the captain plays it to Zablitzki. He's had a real nice game. We mentioned, or I mentioned, is the oddity of seeing him on the power play, but he's been so solid on the penalty kill, five on five as well. In comes Eliash, the centering pass for Yager goes astray. And Kessler now out there with Higgins. They crisscross the line. In comes Kessler, drops for Higgins, shoots, shot of the save, bouncing puck in front. Higgins can't find it, bats at him, and put it wide. What a hands play by Higgins to bat that out of the air on his backhand and put it just wide. Now chipped down to the Canucks zone. That'll be icing against the Devil. Two on two, and Higgins gets to the, the shooting spot. Schneider would like to corral this, but the puck bounces in the air. There's the backhand flail by Higgins. Eliash wandered right by the puck, and that allowed Higgins to get a couple of chances at it. The second being that backhand clear. Peter DeBoer uses his timeout here. Of course, Peter DeBoer and John Tortorella have some history from last year when they got into a heated battle during a Devils-Rangers game about the employment of tough guys. A conversation has spilled over into post-game press conferences and even to the next day. Yeah, neither was happy how the deployment of benches was used. This year, that's a whole different story. You can lighten your wallet in a hurry. Yeah. And neither team really has, in this case, the kind of artillery you'd use in that circumstance. So Henrik Sedin with Daniel. The faceoffs are even at 33 apiece in the game. And the puck way up in the air. Bieksu plays that in. That'll be a hand pass if the Canucks touch it. And that allows Elias to knock it out and go off on a chain. It comes Edler across the line. Alex Edler shoots, and Schneider steers that away easily. Now Daniel down to Henrik. Bumping there was Zajac, who's got a stick in his bid section. That sends Henrik down. And Zajac away to Harold. Lions that down to the Canucks zone. Goes off another change as Yager goes off. Bieksa down to Edler. In comes David Booth, along with Santorelli, the crisscross at the line. Now a race for the puck as Booth has it. Salvador steps into him. David Booth slides that back to Garrison with some time. JC Garrison shoots, scores! Overtime winner for the Vancouver Canucks. Harris of the shot. It may have been tipped. And Vancouver wins it 3 to 2. Garrison has the heaviest of shots, yet this is not that. It's just two steps to the middle of the ice. This shot looks like it's tipped out in front of the, the net here. We'll get a better look at it here. Yeah, that hits. Merrick Zidlicki, 15 feet in front of Schneider. And did Santorelli then get another piece of it? So the Canucks with back-to-back -back overtime wins. And Roberto Luongo comes up with the win. Nice electric player of the game brought to you by Chevrolet. In a goaltending performance and battle that was much talked about for the last week or so, certainly one that had been long in the making here, Roberto Luongo was excellent for the Canucks. When he was tested, he shut the door. A two-goal against performance, your electric player of the game is Roberto Luongo.